Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 news. Big drama emerging as Felipe Massa is coming for Lewis Hamilton's 2008 world title after assembling a legal team to try and cause a battle here in the courtrooms. But Bernie Eccleston is already throwing a spanner into the works. The comments he made a few months ago that actually started this whole debacle, he's now said none of that ever happens and he doesn't recall any of these words and therefore it might even shut down Massa's potential legal challenge before it even really begins. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. We're going to dive into everything today as best as I can possibly explain it. So this is the story that we currently know. Felipe Massa, 2008 Drivers World title runner-up, of course, to Lewis Hamilton. One point behind after that crazy conclusion in Interlagos is that Glock. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. He is seeking damages after what he considers to be himself as the victim of a conspiracy that denied him the championship. He wants to be considered the world champion for 2008 and he wants all the associated Associated damages and bonuses that would have resulted if that was to be the case at the time. He launched this challenge effectively a couple of days ago now, and as we see here from the legal statements, simply put, Mr. Massa is the rightful 2008 Drivers' Champion. Formula One and the FIA deliberately ignored the misconduct that cheated him out of that title. So this is the key point, deliberately ignored. Now, if you guys don't know where this is even coming from, it comes from the Crashgate scandal of the Singapore Grand Prix 2008. This was the full kind of legal statement here to discuss the losses that are likely to have exceeded tens of millions of euros and says that he's a victim of a conspiracy from the FIA and Formula One and that he's the rightful champion, not Mr. Lewis Hamilton. So I guess technically Sir Lewis Hamilton, right? So this is where it began. April the 24th earlier this year, we heard the news that Felipe Massa was going to, well, had actually assembled a legal team to make this try and happen and see if he can actually get this done and go to court and try and get this overturned. It came after comments from Mr. Bernie Eccleston, former top guy in Formula One, who is still kicking around somehow, and he's still stirring the pot all the years after he was doing it back in the day. And um, I don't know, it feels like he's kind of done this to Felipe Massa as well, where he stirred the pot to get Felipe Massa all riled up about 2008, and now he's saying, actually, no, it's not going to happen after all, Felipe. Apologies, mate. So this is where it began. March the 5th, 2023, Eccleston said, Michael Schumacher is still the sole record world champion. Massa was cheated out of the title that he deserved while Hamilton had all the luck in the world and won his first championship. Today, I would have arranged things differently. So, you know, Hamilton definitely lucky in some regard. Unlucky, you could argue, in other regards as well during the course of the season. But, um, yeah, Massa was cheated out of the title. Those are the comments that he made at the time. And this, of course, comes back to 2008, the Singapore Grand Prix. Quick rundown of this story. Flavio Briatore and others at Renault had decided they needed Fernando Alonso to win this race and therefore they ordered their other driver, Nelson Piquet Jr., to deliberately crash on, I think, lap 13, just after most other teams had made a pit stop so that Alonso could come into the pits, get you know, get to the front of the field, basically, with the, uh, well, the, the safety car advantage, and ended up going on to win the Grand Prix. It, at the time, there was some belief that there was something dodgy here, because I'm pretty sure... Even on the uh, the formation lap or the um, the reconnaissance lap, let's say one of the two, PK had like done a similar spin as well that hadn't actually been in the wall at that occasion. So it was kind of known by some that there was some foul play involved during this uh, saga. And it was believed to have been known at the time by the top bosses at Formula One that indeed something had gone down here. And there were some conspiracies and some rumours at the time as to what might have been going on, but it wasn't known publicly until Renault fired Nelson Piquet Jr. And then he came up publicly and said that he's been told to crash and race fixing, race manipulation, all this stuff. Now, in that pit stop phase after the safety car incident, after he deliberately crashed it into the wall, Felipe Felipe Massa came into the pits, obviously in a great Ferrari that year, and Ferrari, in classic Ferrari fashion, got the fuel hose pipe stuck in the car. So it ruined his race, really, and uh, by the time they finished the Grand Prix, I think he was 13th, possibly. Fernando Alonso won. Fantastic stuff. Right, congratulations after that drama. Rosberg, P2. Hamilton, P3. And the McLaren Mercedes getting six points to his name. And um, Felipe Massa was here down in 13th with zero points, right? So back then, the points system was slightly different to what it is today. You guys can just about see that on the right-hand side there. The points that were allocated at the time brings me back. Okay, Glock, Vettel, Heidfeld, right? Good stuff. But um, yeah, so no points that day for Felipe Massa. Hamilton got six and gained six more points in the championship that he wouldn't have got if this race had been effectively considered null and void. And these were the comments supposedly made by Bernie Eccleston at the time earlier this year. 
I can't imagine these weren't made. What does, does Bernie think we just made this up? But anyway, this is what the comment said. We decided at the time not to do anything for now. We wanted to protect the sport and save it from a huge scandal. So he says that FIA President Max Mosley and himself, Bernie Eccleston, knew about this going on, but they wanted to keep it quiet to stop the huge scandal. That's why I used my angelic tongues to persuade former driver Nelson Piquet Jr. to keep calm for the time being. Back then, there was a rule that a world championship classification after the FIA award ceremony at the end of the year was untouchable, which is kind of still the case to some degree. Like once the awards are given out and the trophy is given, it should, it's basically a done deal. Now, maybe there's some legal challenge Massa thinks he can have to this, and maybe it's possible, right? We've seen in the past that, you know, champions that have doped, for example, in athletics or cycling or whatever, have been rescinded their titles, and then the second place or whatever would be given the title instead. It can happen. I don't know if it'll happen in this case, because none of this is Hamilton's fault, right? It's not Hamilton's fault that um, this race was, that you know, this crash occurred, and the race was not declared null and void. Maybe it should have been, but this is what he said at the time. We had enough information to investigate the matter, according to these statutes, we should have cancelled the race and declared none of the results valid, stripping Alonso of the win and stripping everyone of their points. This would have meant that Massa would have become the world champion at the end of the year and not Lewis Hamilton. So as a result of this, Felipe Massa was then asked, okay, based on these revelations, are you going to submit some sort of legal challenge? And Massa says, well, in other sports, titles have been revoked, so I'm going to give it a go. And then a month and a bit later, he had a legal team ready to go for all this money and to potentially to become the 2008 world champion. Champion. We fast forward now to today. So this is Burley Eccles on the left hand side. I'm sure you guys know who this guy is. But he's now come out and said that he doesn't remember any of these comments. So, you know, he, as we saw in the comments a few seconds ago that apparently were made, he seemed to suggest that they knew this had happened and therefore they'd deliberately not decided to do anything about it in, as Massa would describe it, a victim of a conspiracy. Bernie Eccleston now, though, says, I don't remember any of this, to be honest. I don't remember giving the interview, for sure. Now, the guy is is like 92, so you might be able to forgive him for not remembering it, but um, I think the guy's a little bit you know, smarter and more savvy than that, to be honest. I don't remember any of this, to be honest. I don't remember giving the interview, that's for sure, it was kind of the full statement that he gave. So, um, look, I don't know what this means, but it's almost like the one main witness, right, because Max Mosey is now long dead, right, for several years, and you guys might have followed the story on that when some rumours were emerging about exactly what happened with Max Mosley towards the end of his life, but, um, you know, as, as Jay says here, Bernie gets massive all fired up for this legal action and then Bernie comes out and says yeah actually Felipe I don't remember any of this happening you sure I said that um that we knew about this no I definitely didn't know about this I don't know where that quote came from at all so this is the issue when a lot of Massa's um you know intentions for this court case are coming from the effectively word of Bernie Eccleston that F1 and the FEA knew about this because if they didn't know which they probably did. But if they didn't know that anything dodgy had happened and they thought it was just a normal crash and a normal incident and they only knew a year later when Nelson Piquet Jr. revealed it to anyone, then there's no issue, right? Because they wouldn't have known to null and void that race and therefore the championship proceeded as intended. Eccleston seems to suggest earlier this year that they, given the information they had, they should have null and voided that race and therefore Massa has a point potentially. Maybe you could argue that he doesn't have a point anyway, but that's another kettle of fish entirely. And now the guy that I'm guessing Massa would be relying on to come out and say, all right, yes, Massa is correct. We should have done this and we didn't at the time for whatever reason is now saying, actually, no, Felipe, I don't know what you're talking about, mate. I never said that. I do not recall. I simply do not recall. So, you know, that's where we currently get. And I'm sure Massa's seeing this thinking, I've got a second, Bernie. You know, I've put all this work in for the last couple of months to try and make this legal case happen. And uh, now you're telling me that actually, you know, my one main witness just isn't going to bother anymore. So I don't know what the future of this is going to be. That's the update as we currently have it. But I did want to mention that if this legal claim goes anywhere... I do wonder what it means for a potential can of worms to be opened. Many people are looking at Abu Dhabi 2021, and I can understand why, but I also would wonder whether even Hamilton might go back and say, all right, well, Massa, fine, okay, maybe that race is null and void, but how about looking back at Spa 2008, for example, where most people would say by the letter of the law and the regulations or whatever. Hamilton cut the chicane here, the, um, well, this is uh, the bust up chicane, right? He got a 25 second penalty, I think, for this. And pretty much everyone said, 
that was outrageous, right? Like by the letter of the rule, the regulations, and all this stuff, that shouldn't have happened. And maybe Hamilton could then say, well, actually, all right, maybe um, I can put a legal team together and say, well, by this rule and code or whatever, this penalty should not have been what it was. He should have got the victory that weekend or whatever, should have got more points on the board. And therefore, actually, he is the deserving champion after all. So it's like, if you're going to go back and change one thing for one race 15 years ago, then it's opening the possibility for other drivers to try and do the same thing for either events in the same season or in other seasons that could also have merit as well. So um, it could be an absolute mess if this was to go anywhere and maybe Bernie Eccleston realises that and has decided, you know what, Felipe, nice try, but I'm going to shut it down now by not giving you any witness statements at all and, um, you know, basically saying that I do not recall any of what you just mentioned. So that's pretty much the way that we currently understand it. There will be more updates on this, I'm sure, but um, yeah, Bernie was pretty much the key member behind Massa's attempted challenge. And while those quotes were made and still exist and have been attributed to Bernie, if he comes out and says, well, actually, that's not fully true or X, Y, Z is actually happening instead, then it's doubtful that this goes particularly far. But very much interested to your perspective in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.